Welcome to another episode of the Manly Garage. All right, I've got this EA825 V8 twin turbo Audi motor. Um, I got this motor with 692 miles from a uh, reputable seller on eBay. And unfortunately, um, I was really excited and I was like, all right, I'm gonna have new wiring harness. I'm gonna have uh, new vacuum lines. Like a lot of parts are coming with this thing that I'm not gonna end up having to replace. But unfortunately, it ended up showing up with, that one's in good condition ended up showing up with a bunch of stuff like this. I mean, there's like very, whenever you purchase a motor, a used motor online, um, you end up with a lot of just like broken and or missing parts. I've actually already replaced this off the old motor. Um, there's a vacuum line somewhere around here. Here we go, right here. That they just cut uh, coolant lines and passages that are broken. I mean, the motor itself is in great condition, as you can clearly see. I mean, it is clearly a very low mile motor. I'm not super stoked that they paint everything, but I understand why they do it. They got to protect themselves. So after looking the wiring harness over, um, I've actually already swapped this sensor here. That was broken and smashed off. You can see the back end of it in there. There's probably about 20 or 30 different electrical connectors um, the other thing that was concerning about this one is that the, you can see that the wires are physically stripped. After talking with a bunch of people in the industry, uh, apparently this is pretty common. So what I did is I made the decision to remove the wiring harness off of the old motor, as well as the vacuum system and the coolant. Um, it's got like a couple different like spider type connections that run around the motor. Uh, whether they're coolant lines like these guys here, whether they're vacuum lines like these guys here, or actually this is the EVAP system for the uh, um, uh, the uh, oil separators so that way you can get the crankcase vent stuff. But then you've also got the um, vacuum lines themselves and they all come off in complete units, but it is a lot of work. So this is just something for you guys to anticipate in the event that you do end up Purchasing a second-hand motor, even though it's low mileage, uh, apparently the people who get paid to remove these things get paid by the job, and they, they don't really get paid a lot. So whenever you end up having to replace a wiring harness, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of connectors here, like a lot. And as you follow this up, you can actually see that I've got the new wiring harness coming off. So these connectors have already been... Uh, correction. These connectors have already been removed and replaced. And now what I did is I started in one corner and I'm working my way and I'm basically just tracing the old wiring harness back. And I do this because it just saves a lot of time. You pull a connector off, you put a connector on, pull a connector off, put a connector on. Um, there's a lot of brackets like these guys here associated with the wiring harness that you end up having to remove. So instead of like looking at the wiring harness as a whole, like this is a, a wiring harness connector that you're going to end up having to pop off. Um, but like the, this guy here, it's also got like uh, insert tabs that pop in kind of similar to this guy here that pop into this bracket. But you can actually end up removing the entire bracket. And I want to see, we'll trace back here. Yeah, so like that bracket's right here. So then you can end up, no, that's the front of the motor bracket. Uh, yeah, see, oh, here we go. That bracket's actually right here. So if you just disconnect the bracket and remove the bolts, then you can save a lot of time and prevent a lot of damage to plastic connectors. Um, another thing that's really important about taking these things apart is actually the connectors themselves. On these Audi motors in particular, they've got a like a two-stage connector. So I wanna make sure you guys can see this. This is actually a connector lock. So you push this guy in, it won't push in until it's actually been connected, but you can compare the two right here. So it's got a two-stage lock on it. You plug the connector in, it's going to snap in place and then you're going to pull it, push in this secondary lock once it's snapped into place there. Um, but when coming apart, you end up having to release that. And I found the easiest way to do that is to take a relatively small screwdriver and you just kind of slide it in there and pop it out. 
Ah, this screwdriver's too big. I must have set the other one down somewhere else. Let's see if I can find it. I'm gonna set that down there for now. Here we go. Nope, that's the same one. I have too many screwdrivers. Anyways, you, you set a small screwdriver down in there. Sometimes you can get them to release with your finger, but it's, it's pretty difficult. Go grab one. This toolbox is such a mess. Here we go. Small screwdriver. You slide this guy in here and you just, right there, just gently pry backwards. And then I found that if you take a large screwdriver, this is how you can avoid breaking these connectors. We grab a larger screwdriver. And this is usually a two-handed operation, but I'm gonna try and do it with the phone in hand. You, on these specific connectors, you can push down here and you can see how it releases the connector. But pulling back the, uh, the rubber seals can be pretty, pretty firm. So sometimes it helps to actually physically push in on the connector and that like I'm pinching this together with my fingers. Now that it's been pinched, I pull back on this guy. And then what I'm gonna end up doing is taking my screwdriver, let's see if I can do this. Let's see if I can film and remove a connector and get this thing to focus. There we go. There we go. You take your screwdriver and you just kind of gently push. I mean, very, yeah, there it goes. Hope you guys enjoyed the ride to the bottom of the floor. Yeah. You just gently apply pressure. And I mean, it's maybe five, 10 pounds of force. Let's see if we can get this thing to focus again. There we go. So push back and just gently slide off and that releases them. There are also some uh, connector pliers out there that do make it like quite a bit easier um, to disconnect these connectors. But then going back together, connector seated. If it's not seated, there it goes. Now it's seated, I ended up having to push a little harder. If it's not fully seated, this guy won't go into place. Ugh, give it a push. There we go. There we go. You don't want to force anything. As soon as you start trying to force things on these connectors, they break really, really easily. And that's what ultimately ends up happening with stuff like this. Somebody didn't properly release the lock or maybe it got crushed in shipping. I don't know. But either way, um, to the guys in the wrecking yards out there doing stuff like this, like these are hard rubber lines or hard plastic lines. It's like a I, I haven't looked at the price, but I would be willing to bet that it's a, at a minimum, like a $500 part from Audi to replace. It's just not something that they commonly have to replace because there's no reason to do that. Oh, look, broken wiring harness. That's another one that I just noticed. Oh, look, brand new water pump. This is a brand new water pump, broken. This water pump has 690 miles on it. Broken. God, that's frustrating. Like the amount of damage that these guys do to these cars, removing these motors costs thousands of, like if I, if I purchased this motor off of eBay and I was planning on installing it, in like let's say my B8 S4, this motor was delivered $17,000. $17,000 to have this much damage, to have to replace this much crap is insane. It's insane. To say that I am frustrated and angry would be an understatement, but you know, it is what it is at this point. We just got to drive on. If I have to remove and install old parts, I'll remove and install old parts, order what I can in the interim and just keep moving forward. But it's not just the part costs that end up hurting us in the shop. It's the physical amount of time that it takes to remove a harness like this without like re completely removing the harness without breaking things is a very time intensive endeavor. Disconnecting a few connectors, not breaking a brand new water pump. That's not time intensive. That takes a couple of minutes tops. This is absolutely insane. The fact that I reached out to this company and they said, oh, well, you know, there's no major damage. I'm gonna give them a parts estimate. 
I think that's probably the best course of action. And in the event that they don't end up being forthcoming about the damage that they did, I think I'm going to end up posting their name publicly because this is just insane. I mean, here's another one. Broken for no reason. Nipple snapped off. Bracket snapped off. I mean, take the extra two seconds, guys. This stuff costs, I mean, every single thing that's broken, guarantee you, minimum, absolute minimum, $100. Every single thing. And it's totally unnecessary. Brand new parts going in the trash can. Anyways. The next step is going to be to, uh, as I'm feeding the wiring harness through, I need to be aware of these lines here. Um, as I start to come across them, I also need to weave them in because they actually end up going under and integrate with the harness itself. So going back together, you need to be cautious. You need to um, really think ahead. It's a lot of work and an unnecessary amount of work. And I really wish that these guys would have just taken the extra two seconds to unsnap some connectors and not just arbitrarily smash things. Like this, I just discovered right now. That's insane. That is insane. 690 mile motor, destroying parts for no reason. Anyways, guys, um, I'm gonna keep posting content if you like this stuff. If, uh, if you do, give me a follow, leave a comment below, uh, or uh, what else? There's something else you can do. Oh yeah, hit like the, the bell button or something. I don't know. That stuff uh, helps push us up in the algorithm, helps get the eyes on this type of content that should be focused on this content. If you don't like it, I mean, don't do those things. Please don't, because like I don't, I don't want the algorithm putting the wrong people on our channel because that ends up hurting us too. So anyways, enjoy the rest of your day. If you guys want to see something or specific on this motor, I've got the spare one over here. I've still got to remove a few parts off of it. I will be conducting a teardown. Hey, look at that, exhaust ports. And the intake ports. Chonky intake ports on this cylinder head. This is a really nice motor. I'm really excited about it. Anyways, um, holler if you guys got any questions and uh, drop them in the comments for us so we know what to make so that you guys can enjoy it. Enjoy your Friday. And have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you guys later.